Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another one of my deck guides. For today, I have a square tail deck for you. The leader ability that we're going to be using is Deadeye Ambush. It allows us to spawn an Elven Deadeye in an allied robe. We have three charges of this. Basically, that means that we get uh, three of these tokens that you see here spawned. And what we're looking to do with our leader ability is save it for the end of a match when we're playing Venosial. And the leader will contribute to our ability to do more damage with her when we play her on the melee row. The stratagem that we're using is Anshay Saber. We get to spawn and play um, this unit that you see here. This is simply a quick and effective way to activate our scenario card that we'll be playing in round one. Gives us more elf units so that we can go ahead and draw out Eleran quicker to the board. Okay. So I did release a traps deck uh, fairly recently and obviously kind of the, the traps decks, they got some kind of a buff if you look at the cards that got upgraded. So I have come back and revisited the deck so it's going to look pretty similar but I've added in Venosial for the change and I've switched some things around just to fit her in this deck and the emphasis will be to sp to swarm as many elf token units as possible so Venosial can do a ton of damage um, at the end of a match and we're kind of going for a board wipeout theme. So what I'm going to do is run you through this list bottom up and explain how best to play each card during a match when using this deck. So we've got two of these bomber units that you see here. They just allow you to damage two random enemy units by two. Go ahead and play these out in the first round when you're playing Feign Death. That's pretty much when we want to commit all our units and we want to go unitless round three. With the commandos, same thing. First round card, passive points. You really want to play these first um, in as early as possible just for the boosting benefit that we're going to get. Um, it would either be those two or Swordmaster first, right? And with the Swordmaster, nice thing about it, whenever you play an elf, we get to de decrease its cooldown by one and it's doing damage by one with the order ability. So it gives you a bit of control in the first round. Um, then moving on, we do have the Bowman. This card got buffed up. This is a really nice card now. It's a four powered unit and it can do up to three points of damage at four provision. So it's pretty good. What you want to do is ultimately play this card on the range row and target your opponent's units that are stacked on a range row so you can do three points of damage max, okay? So once again, guys, all the units that you see here, these are first round plays for us with scenario to get us round control. Waylay got a buff too. Um, damage an enemy unit by three and spawn an elven deadeye on a random row. It used to be that you needed a death blow to spawn a token. Now it's just you, you spawn it no matter what. So it can play quite nice. And what you're looking to do with waylay is, you know, you can keep it in your deck round one, just gives you a bit of extra control, some extra points, but it does synergize well in our deck later on when we're going unitless because it's gonna spawn a token and that token can be used to do two points of damage for Venosial. Now we're going to get into the traps that we have in this deck. Um, with the traps, as I mentioned, we're looking to play these over a round three with Eldane ultimately. So in round one, use them very sparingly. You might just use like a crushing trap just to help secure round control, but that should be about it really. With the incinerating traps, these would be the first traps you'd look to play out um, as you're entering round three and play them for ambush so don't spring these. You just leave them on the board for your opponent to deploy a unit and they'll damage that unit by five. Okay, so we have two of those. With the crushing trap, um, this is a nice trap to play basically at the end, just before you're playing Eldane. This would be one of the last latest traps you play. Um, on ambush after two turns, at the end of your turn, damage all enemy units on the row with the most units by two. So Crushing Trap can play like pretty big at the end of a match. You can imagine we've got Sabretooth Tiger stacking 
um, causing our opponents to stack their units on a certain row, and it just falls right into this. It's so sweet in trap decks. Then we have the Pitfall Trap. Spring is really nice because it allows you to split six damage randomly between all enemy units. So if your opponent um, has played a unit six power or less onto the board and it's quite a good unit for them, you could play Pitfall and spring it and destroy it if there's no other units there. Or if you think you've got a good grasp of your opponent's deck and you know uh, what they're going to play and when they're going to play it, like you just know they're going to go for like Fukushima or like a Neuromancy or something like that, just leave it on ambush. And what we'll do is split damage equal to the provision cost of the card played by your opponent between all the units on their side of the board. So it can be pretty devastating if you know your opponent's deck. Then we have Serpent Trap. Um... Usually you find a lot of good value playing Serpent Trap on the spring because it destroys the enemy unit with the lowest power. So once again, as I explained with Pitfall, if your opponent plays a real good unit and it's the only unit on the board, like a defender or maybe some unit with a strong order ability, you know, just play this with spring and you can completely eliminate it. Or if not, if your opponent's got a very tall unit or an engine that's climbed high and you can anticipate anticipate that they're going to play a special card soon after if you leave it on ambush it will flip over and destroy the highest powered unit on your opponent's side of the board Ellerin is a card that we have for thinning in this deck and provides tempo at the end of your turn if you control five or more elves summon this unit from your deck to your melee row most of the time we end up thinning out Ellerin in um, round one when we are triggering the scenario obviously we're swarming a lot of elves just make sure you have room on your melee row for her to come out. If we don't pull her round one, that's fine. We can end up pulling her over a long round three of Eldane because we're transforming so many traps and we got leader as well. Isn't Grimm's another card that got a buff? Um, the base power has been increased, so it's pretty solid now. Boost all other allied elf units by one. Whenever you play an elf, boost self by one. Isengrim is going to be used in two ways ultimately in our deck. You either use it for round control, round um, round one, once you've played out scenario. Like once you've played scenario, you've got all your elf units out and you really want to get round control. It'll be like a final point slammy kind of play you do. Or over the round three, you know, you hit Eldane, you've got all your elf units and then you're going to go ahead and click leader. Um, get your extra elf units out through your leader and then play Isengrim or you know you're going to time it between Isengrim or Venosua as a last say if you're taking it over the third and final round we've got Alzul's double cross in here just for access into the deck it'll pull the highest unit from your deck so we have a few options there really it's going to get us it could get a saber tooth Isengrim, Eldade, and Venosil. So, you know, all of those cards are cards that are very important for us that we need to get. So it, it's a pretty nice fit in this deck to have double cross. And you most likely go for that round three. It's a card that you're going to keep round three if you've missed something and then you just search into your deck with it. Hattori allows us to create and play a trap card from our starting deck. So he's going to give you a choice of three traps um usually like serpent trap is a great extra spawn from him but if you play him really late crushing trap always feels nice too and once again with hattori he's a card we're looking to play over round three then we've got saber tooth tiger i like having tiger in the deck because it just ensures some safety points that cannot be touched by damage or control really unless your opponent's got a heat wave right but um, it transforms into an artifact. So it's just seven points protected. And it's going to be doing damage to your opponent's units if they're alone on their rows. Two points of damage, pretty nuts. This this card is like a card you'd open up with into the third round. Like when it's your turn to go first, you play this because it's going to encourage your opponent to row stack. And then we're setting up a good crushing trap, right? Eldane just will be transforming all of our traps into this token unit that you see here. With Eldane, you're going to look to play them as late as possible. Obviously, after all your traps have been played out from your hand. 
and he's going to give us the condition for Venosil to do a board wipeout and do a ton of damage across the board. And you just want to time the sequencing of the play according to like if you've got Isengrim in your hand too, you know. So you might have to play Eldane a bit early, you know, to work with Isengrim and the timing of Venosil. Yep, so then we have Venosil here. Venosil got a buff too. Her provision cost has been dropped by one, I'm quite sure. Um, the way we're looking to the use her here is playing her on the melee row. Each allied elven deadeye damages a random enemy unit by two. So the token once again. So with Venosil, you wait till Eldane has transformed all of the traps. Before you play her, you click your leader ability out. Um, you get as many tokens out as possible. Play her on the melee row. Just make sure you've got room on the melee row when you're going to play her. So there's like an end of um, like a finisher of the match really. Either her or Isengrim will be the final card you play. And, you know, in some extreme cases, if that doesn't look like the best option for us, just play her on range throw and you get to spawn two Elven Deadeyes. And Neuromancy is one of our consistency cards in here. Allows us to play any card from our deck. We get to run this twice. This will help you get scenario round one because it's very imperative for us. It's very imperative for us because we need this card, Feign Death, okay? Feign Death is the card that generates a ton of points for us. Round one establishes round control, puts us in a fantastic position to win a match because a lot of decks like to run control. We're going unitless round three. They're going to lose a lot of value against us. So first card you play round one is Feign Death. You click Stratagem if you're going first and you just play your bronzes out. You look to win that way. So that's a rundown of the list. Now I'm going to explain how we want to execute the strategy for this deck. And we're going to talk in terms of optimal conditions to aim for, right? So round one, if we're going first, play Feign Death, you click Stratagem, um, that activates Feign Death, one of the chapters. And then at the end of that turn, you thin out Eleran. And then what you're going to look to do is win round one just by playing all of these bronze units down the bottom that you see here. That's They're all fine to commit. At most, if your opponent pushes you pretty hard, you could commit uh, one trap, like crushing trap, because you would have played into the round and there's probably a number of units. It could pay off good. Um, and then Isengrim at most, okay? Ultimately, we want to win round one, and all we're doing round two is passing. And then we're just going to go into a long round three. And how you want to open up into long round three is play Sabretooth Tiger. And then what you do is you just play all of your unitless stuff. You're just going to play all of the traps. That's what you're looking to carry into the third round. And then what you're going to do is time the play of Eldane, considering whether or not you've got Isengrim in your hand. So if you've got Isengrim in your hand, you're going to commit Eldane at the end after all your traps have been played out. Maybe you do him first or you do Venosil first. Depends how the match is looking, depends what you're thinking. But most likely our final play of the match would be Venosil. And then when you play her, make sure Eldane and your leader has been fully played out. Play her in the melee row and hopefully get a very good board wipeout with her. So that's a rundown of the list and the strategy. I hope you're going to enjoy the following matches. Please share your feedback down below. Nice. So Nero ensures us feign death, which is really good. We don't want to go trap heavy first round, right? Those are like round three plays we want to do. Mm, most of our cards here, they're pretty good for round three, but we want more bronzes first, right? But we'll go ahead and open like this. Don't dare think you can escape. Now we will see who is weak. Good. Humans to the sea. Nice. Good thinning with Ellerind in this deck. We'll see what kind of a deck they are too. They may be traps also. Saskia. Oh, I'm sorry, I am. 
All right. We could go ahead and take that out. Maybe we save our control. Okay, we'll get passive points. Just keep it like this for now. Hey, what's up, Perchy? How are you? Doing a Venossial Swarm deck today. Playing traps, round three. Round one, feign death scenario. Yep. So they've got Madoc. They're going to have bombs. Control deck. Let's see if they've got traps too. If they're doing Madoc, it could be Gord that they play later. You're dead already. Okay. So far, so good. We're going to try save leader for round three for Venossial as well. Just gives extra damage points, you know, in combo with Eldane, transforming all our traps into tokens. So it's a big finish for us. Vanadane. This is our land, Dwarf. Right. You're not welcome here. I trust now will never act. Okay, it's interesting. Put a crushing trap down there, they're roast stacking anyway. We have passive points. Could get a nice clean hit here. Yep. May your sword and arm be one. I feel like doubles a bit of an overcommit because we want to save these for later. We just got so many bronzes in deck, you know. We just yeah, it's taken away from our Eldane and Venossial value later. I may pass. If we go a long round three, we're still happy. They've gone down a bit of points here too. That's all we want. We just want a long round three with this deck. If you're going to commit traps round one, just do it like sparingly. Not too heavy. Just enough to kind of maybe get you a long round or round control. They're gonna go sim less into like infinite waylays. That's what they're doing, aren't they? Okay. So we get our long round three, right? Okay, good. We should be getting it, shouldn't we? Yep, they play another card. Yep, 
Yeah, good, good. That's what we wanted. Wow, we got full leader out as well. Very nice for us. Fantastic. Full leader is gone. Long round three, perfect. Great, great. We just chuck a bronze on the dry pass here. This should be fine. The hand looks great otherwise. Yeah, beautiful. Yep, great. We await the signal. Mm -hmm. All we're looking to pull here is Isengrim, Venosial, you can go Waylays and Traps. That's it. Good. So Isengrim for a Nero, maybe? We could go actually Alzor's double cross for this and Enero will get us a Serpent Trap. Yeah, I think that's how we're going to play it. Okay. They could have a Heat Wave, we'll find out now. So pretty nice for us. We get everything we need, really. It's good. Renew. Yes, that's right. So they're going to play Venosial last two, aren't they? Probably want this dead. Maybe it's pitfall now, just to try to kill that off. for them. We definitely want to get Vanadane out of there. I mean, they need targets as well for Waylay though. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn. Trap on trap. Right. Uh. 
it's not a big deal at all, is it? I mean, we should board wipe here now, really. We've got Pitbull and Serpent. It's likely to just blast their whole stuff. Hey, Plato, what's up, buddy? How are you? Welcome, man. Been a while, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. How's your games been so far? Yes, I have. I know everyone's playing it at the moment. Nah, I'm not playing it, man. I'm just a Gwent player, hardcore. <laughs> It's a great game. Nice, nice. <laughs> this is gonna be a board wipe, man. We got a serpent trap, pitfall, and a crushing trap there. I think it's going to be L day next. Yeah, it should be. What's what's B O T W stand for? Poor Mr. Opponent. Yeah, pretty much you. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, we just go Eldane. No it's gonna be a board wipeout. I mean, they probably go Simlas, don't they? Zelda open world game. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, so far so good. Hope you're gonna like this deck. Um, yeah, we should go cross into Isengrim. Nice. But I still should really pop now. Sixteen points of damage, is it? You are no lunatic of mine. To die. Nice. I'll do so sword in hand. Baron has shown us the way. Right. Oof, rough. Looks good. I think they got Gord last. Yeah, that's right. Nice win. Good. Traps is really a, a hard matchup usually for these pirate decks. Because they're relying on control a lot. Yeah, 
Yeah, we missed scenario. It's all good, I figured that. Normal elves, nice. Our first match of this stream was great. We had like almost a board wipeout with an Ossial. We hit a really good one. It was against like uh, one of those infinite waylay decks with Vatadane. We should be passing early and like try to get scenario next round maybe defend the bleed or something like that May your sword and arm be one. when you don't draw scenario round one with this deck just look to pass early it's the best way to do it cool Pretty deadly double boat. Nice. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, man. It would have been nice, but now they've moved this, we can't kill it. Yeah, I just passed now. Like, we've pretty much got our end round hand. Like, we've got Eldane and all traps and Venosil. It's not what we want right now. Yeah, a lot of people are playing Frost. If you want a deck that works good against it, I'd probably say play like Enslave, Enslave 6, something like that. Because they've got engines, they need their Voglets on the board, Wild Hunt Hounds, stuff like that. Um, just go for a control deck then. Pirates might be good, like what I'm versing here. Wow, that's just unlucky. I've drawn Ellerin twice. <laughs> okay, we got Fain Death. Kinda new to the game? No problem, we're here to help you. You know, my answer to that is, it depends on the deck you're playing. Um, you know, that's, that's what's really gonna determine how you push around. With my deck here, we really want a long round three. If, if we get pushed into round two, it's our weakest part. So you want to push hard to win round one. I don't mind playing Feign Death here because it's our round one card anyway. Even if they pass. <laughs> I play all decks, man, pretty much. All factions. I should say all factions, not all decks. You know, I try to cater to the Gwent community, right? So I come around to everything. I try to keep everyone happy as much as possible. Okay, good. We got our long round. That's all we wanted. purposefully didn't play the bronze there because I want to save Ellerin for points at the end of the match. Just pray I don't pull Ellerin now for the third time. <laughs> okay, we got a few good things. Oh, great.
pretty good looking hand. I think we could roll with this. Um, they're, they're devotion, right? They've got King Brand because this is eight. Okay. So double cross pulls is in Grim for us. Nice. Roast stack's good. I always like adding Tiger into my trap stacks because it makes them roast stack. And then we just sit this. That's not really good for them, is it? Seven to eight. Yeah. Well, maybe it's it's okay then. So we want to avoid killing that then, don't we? Yeah. Depends what they play though too, right? But they probably got the cards. <laughs> they, got, they got some good value out of those cards, man. It worked out nice for them. We might as well go Serpent. Are you serious? Um, they're playing. Are they playing Articard? <laughs> I'm getting freaked out here, man. <laughs> I'm worried now, all of a sudden. If I high roll Serpent Trap, I might double click. I should probably double click now before things get crazy. Should I double click? No, I shouldn't actually. Maybe I'll wait. Destroys. But I've got a plan. The idea is that crushing trap kills that. And then I double click. Yeah. It is on a god. Your body is stronger than your steel. Mm. For the daisy of the valley. <sighs> Armor is really good for them. Gives them a lot of protection here.
Wow. Patience is a virtue. Good things come to those who wait. That's the saying to take away from this. Just like that, we turn the tables. We get a freaking swarm coming up here. I, I might go um, the Nosil now, just so they don't kill our tokens. Uh, then what do they get there? They got 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Maybe we do it now. Cast off your arms, then we'll talk. Almost killed him. It's pretty good. He he got some protection there through Sucrus. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Alex? Wow, thanks for the Prime subscription. Really appreciate it, man. As you can see, I'm I'm rocking um, the stuff you got me, dude. Looks sick. Thanks a lot. Yeah, they got really lucky there with Sucrus. But anyway, it's a pretty good finish. The only good human is a dead human. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good win for us. Yeah. But honestly, if we killed Sucrose there, they would have had nothing. It's changed. So, you know, their thinning package for SK, it got changed up a bit, didn't it? Because the skirmish is a five provision now. These cards. ship we could kill coral here now cool now we thin out Eleron we shall drive yep. the ape man into the sea tournament to practice for wish you the best of luck with it hope you do really well
right? Probably passing now, I think. Yeah, they threw crack. <laughs> For Tekken? Ah, oh, sick. Nice, nice. I used to play Tekken ages ago. They're all old school version ones. So if they bleed now, it's this is where it gets awkward for our deck. Most likely they bleed. Beach volleyball game. Oh man, I remember that. That's some old ass memories. <laughs> well. Yeah, DOA. I used to play that too. <laughs> wow, they're passing? Really? Oh, I'd never pass against traps, man, if I thought it was a trap deck. Honestly. Yeah, I think Wele looks sound. You haven't seen someone play in a long time? Nice touch. Don't forget Killer Instinct on Super Nintendo. Ooh, double cross. Double cross gets us for Nosil. Good. Nice, nice. Wow, we missed a Neuromancy whole match. So it happens, man. Hmm. Have many of you guys bought the, uh, oh, that's crap. Yeah, like I was saying, um, have many of you guys bought the new Dandelion Journey? And what do you think of it compared to the others? That's really bad for them. Good for us. You guys haven't? Okay. Yeah, it is a weak play. That was a good hit. Ooh, I should play Serpent, shouldn't I? Wow. Right. Cleaning up so far. That's just devastating. Really rough for them. <laughs> yum yum. <laughs> Place crack again? Sacrifices for Melusine, one and all. Right. Dare start with me. 
Pitfall. Yeah, it's how you feel, really. I try to get these out earlier, just in case he he might play another boat, can't he? Maybe another one of these. I don't know. Did he just discard? He discarded a slash. All right. Um. Hated Hattori. Coward. <laughs> yeah, I remember him. Yeah, we'll see Dutch. I mean, Pitbull on the spring plays for 6 damage. So we'll see how we want to play this. But they, they must play a unit now, right? Hmm. Okay. It's still good. It's still alright. Sabretooth just clean it up over here. We're loving it. Wait, what does uh, Cross get us? Yeah, okay, it's Venosial. I think Pitfall. Pitfall is good, isn't it? They're discarding specials anyway. Yeah, I played a lot of that stuff, Dutch, yeah. I was hardcore on Super Mario Bros when I was young though. I played all of the, those I'll games. Wow. So, so he dies to Crushing Trap next. <laughs> that, was, that was devastating, man. Maybe waylay helps with a bit of, you know, control in the first. We'll see. Speci deck, cool. <laughs> yeah, he gifted the crap out of my channel. Puzzle six waylay. Wow. We don't really care about this. Cool, cool. I haven't seen it. Oh. Right. Maybe they got a bad hand. How's, how's this supposed to work? I, I mean, do they play Feign Death? Is that why they have that? Uh. 
I just first one like that at the beginning of my stream. Not sure. It looks like they get a bad first round hand to me, just the cards they're playing here. I'm seeing like a lack of uh, synergy with their hand. Which is good for us, we can capitalize. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn. Yeah, might as well kill this I guess. Well, they played a bomb. Okay. We're getting leader charges out, we're happy. One more unit and we pull out Ellerin. Should put some good pressure on them. Melvin Meadow. Yeah, I was thinking that too, Dutch. Because the hand looks a bit uh, bad here. Just the cards they're playing. We just want our round three. That's all we're looking for. That's fine. They're playing a lot of weight laser. That's two now, right? Yeah. Pressure's on. Pressure's on now. They might pass on five. Yeah, it plays in. They're spawning a lot of tokens, so are they playing like the Nosil as well? What's the idea of their deck? Gavin's nice, yeah. We were not the ones to start this war. Yeah, they've got it for thinning. Mm. 
Nice. Good. We got round control. That's what we want. That's it. We played so many bronzes. I think we're going to pull a lot of good traps now. Chicken dinner. Yeah, we just keep this. Don't even have to change. One liter charge out. Yeah. I like Yaven in these uh, elf decks, man. He's so good. I couldn't fit him in this one, though. Having Venosio in here. Maybe I go on another click. Double cross? Yikes. Mm. So double cross gets us a commando. Jeez. Right, right. Oh. Is what it is. Bit of an unlucky pull. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, man. The trap guy? No, he's not high spell. Wow, crushing trap should really clean up here. Um, why did they stack like this? Misplay, huh? Serpent Trap could be alright now because this climbs anyway. Okay, interesting. So they misplayed. But then this cops damage here. I think it's just like a suboptimal play on their part. Shiru? Yeah. The only good human is a dead. For the daisy of the valley! Mm. I think their card positioning um, isn't the best here, is it? We'll see. Your best will offend us, Thanks a lot, George. Really appreciate the kind words. Traps will be a lot more common. Good, Sora. Show you. Rich, what's going on, buddy? Uh, crushing trap. Yeah, we could search for Hattori. A sword to outshine all others. Maybe we kill Commando now with a serpent. It would be nice.
Do you hear? They approach. Mm. Thanks, Sorosh. Appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words. Glad you like it. Great oak, wow. I'll just leave it sitting on ambush. Getting a discard out of them, you know, still something. <clears throat> Vernos and Great Oaks, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Lambert Swordmaster, pretty hard counter at the moment, yeah. <laughs> You've given me an idea, man. I'll make a Witch's deck maybe next. They've got a special in their hand, right? Is that where they're waiting? Igni? Jeez. Last words. <laughs> we'll do this first. Okay, we got it anyway. Sweet. Nice. Just pulled through. 